Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I'm just going to take a quick second of your time to let you know about the convention that's taking place this weekend. This coming weekend, June 22nd through the 24th, I'll be in Huntsville, Alabama for Hamacon. Hamacon is an anime and gaming convention. I think you guys will probably enjoy it if you're in the area. It's going to be nice, it's going to be heartfelt, I'm going to be telling some scary stories, running some game shows. If you guys really haven't gotten a chance to see one of the game shows that we've been doing at any of the conventions, then you really want to come out and see it because it's a lot of fun. You guys get a chance to win some prizes, win some shirts, and of course it's always wonderful that I get to see you guys. So that's Huntsville, Alabama, this weekend, Hamacon. Take a look at the link in the description down below for more information. That's all, on to tonight's story. In college, I struggled to make ends meet. Most of my meals consisted nearly entirely of ramen noodles, garnished with a scrambled egg if my finances were stronger than usual, combined with a weekly splurge of a candy bar and soda each Friday. I worked a part-time job, but city rent was expensive. My classes were too tough to work more than 20 hours a week, and my parents had cut me off the year before. I was desperate, searching for any solution to bring in any spare cash, and eventually, I found one. It started as a joke among my friends. Hey, you know, Tony, said one of my roommates, as I poured a sad portion of noodles and a half a spice rack into boiling water. Even the pigeons in the city have better meals than you do. Meals? Meals, counted another one of my roommates, laughing. Hell, I bet they even have higher savings in their bank accounts than him. They laughed, and I ate my soup with a frown. But the idea stuck in my head. And that night I lay awake, pondering. I had often seen or picked up spare change on the sidewalk on the way to class. Nothing huge, a penny here, a dime there. Maybe a quarter if I was lucky. But that was just a small portion of the city, from end to end. There was likely a small fortune hidden in the labyrinth. Small rewards gleaming from cracks in the sidewalk and among the weeds. I didn't have the time to retrieve them, but... Someone did. And that someone was test subject number one, Jeffrey the Crow. I'd made friends with Jeffrey the year before, as he hobbled outside my apartment pecking for food amongst the street. His beady eyes had squinted at me as I walked to class, following me as I ate a granola bar for breakfast, the splurge that I could justify since I had worked an extra hour that week. Caw, he'd cried, flapping his wings to flutter just past my head to land on the path in front of me. Caw! Not get, I said, clutching the granola bar tight and trying to sidestep him. His head tilted as he shuffled to stand directly in front of me, and he cawed again, expectant, waiting for me to pay the toll to use his path. So I left him a tiny piece of the bar and continued walking. And Jeffrey never forgot my gift. Every morning he waited for me outside, and we developed a relationship. A one-way tribute, where I would share a crumb or a noodle or some other minute piece of food on my way to class. And over time, Jeffrey grew on me. Plus, I realized just how smart Jeffrey could be for a bird. For instance, after a month, he learned I never left my apartment on weekends, so he stopped showing up outside my door on those days. And after two months he started giving me trinkets in exchange for the tiny bits of food. They were all small. A bit of string, a button, maybe a hair tie. But every so often, maybe once every two weeks, Jeffrey would bring me a coin. Now, with the idea fresh in my mind, I decided to capitalize on that. So every morning, Jeffrey brought me a coin. I gave him twice as much food, plus... A raisin, which was his favorite treat. For two months, Jeffrey failed to realize the trend. Instead, complaining on the days where he received his normal portions. Then on the third month, something clicked. And Jeffrey only brought me coins from that day forward. At first, it was only amusing. 
Using my college-level math skills, I calculated that Jeffrey could contribute about 60 cents per week on average to my net worth, enough to bolster my diet with two or three bananas a week. But Jeffrey had friend crows, ones that had watched our interactions from the street but never approached, and eventually, they too learned the pattern. Until by the time I graduated, 12 crows brought me presents each morning, a whopping $7.20 a week, equivalent to just over a pound of bacon at the store. It became a running joke amongst my roommates, but their eyes still widened in awe each morning as the crows queued up each morning bearing gifts. I was sad to have to end my project when I graduated. It had been fun, but I had landed a job at a plant six hours north of my college. This job brought home far more bacon than the crows could. So I packed my belongings into my car, meeting Jeffrey one last time as I prepared to move into my new apartment. He squinted his eyes and hopped closer as I started the engine. And I frowned. Sad to see him go. So, on a whim, I took Jeffrey with me. And I didn't seem to mind the ride, especially the boiling peanuts I fed him from the gas station at our first stop. And he took a particular interest in the, the heating vents, fanning his wings out to absorb their warmth. Civilization drifted away as we drove, less and less buildings appearing until we were, we were deep in the countryside. Forests taking over where I was used to streets. And on arrival, I released Jeffrey from my car as I unpacked into my new place, watching him hop after me with each trip until he eventually grew bored and fluttered off. Each morning, he still met me, quickly growing used to my schedule, and still bringing coins in exchange for breakfast, and the other crows in the area were observant to the outsider, watching our exchange until only ten days in, they too started finding coins for me. I smiled. I looked like I wasn't going to leave my project behind after all. But each day, less coins showed up at my doorstep. In the countryside, there were far fewer coins to be found. And Jeffrey started bringing other objects again, nudging them towards me for food, until six weeks in, there was no spare change left to be found. I felt bad for him, having drawn him away from his home, so I still paid him in full two peanuts for each time. Though now there were twelve crows that showed up at my door, and their numbers were growing each day. And then one day, Jeffrey brought me something different. Standing on the path to my car, he dropped something small and white onto the ground. Something something hard that bounced. It made the hair on the back of my neck raise as I recognized it. A tooth. More precisely, a molar. What looked to be a, a human molar. No, Jeffrey. I said, stepping backwards and putting a quarter from my pocket. You have to bring me quarters, not... not this. Caw, he said, insistent and flapping his wings. He tilted his head as I walked to my car, picking the molar back up and landing on the hood. Caw. With a soft tink, he dropped it on the metal, scratching at it, his eyes narrowed. Swallowing, I reached forward and I grabbed it through my mittens, and then handed him a peanut out of guilt. I suppose I should have expected him to bring something like this every once in a while. And I put the thought into the back of my head. But the other crows had been watching the transaction. And by the end of the week, their numbers had reached two dozen. Every morning they flocked to me, as I waded through them, cawing and flapping, each searching for a reward and each with something new in their beaks. They dropped it to the ground as I bit my lip, watching the small, white objects come to rest on the concrete. See, Twenty-four of them. One for each crow. And every day they brought more. Even after I stopped rewarding them, they continued to show up to my doorstep, dropping the teeth in a mound, their eyes angry as I refused to give them their payment, but instead swept the teeth under my porch. Other crows still picked up on the behavior, and their numbers still grew larger as more teeth would be deposited. 
been three months since Jeffrey brought the first two. And I don't know where they find them, or how they can be so plentiful. I don't want to know, because wherever they're getting them from, it must be nearby. What I do know is, I now have five pounds of human molars under my porch. Hey there, everyone who's listening on YouTube, or those of you who are listening on the podcast. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and before you head out for the night, I just wanted to let you know about a couple of things. Without you, the show doesn't take place. So, if you guys would like to support the show, or if you guys would like to get your hands on a couple of cool little things whenever new things come out, check out patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta, and any support that you guys show, I really appreciate it. So everyone who's already donated to the Patreon, I really appreciate it. You guys are amazing. I thank you so much for that. If you guys are looking for more Creepypasta Storytime, there's a new video that's uploaded to this channel or uploaded to the podcast every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday now. You can be able to get more from me at facebook.com slash mrcreepypasta or on Twitter at mrcreepypasta and then the number zero. Thanks so much for listening, kids, and for your support. And sweet dreams.